virtual brown bag lunch with the regional services centers director. I guess technically it's a recess type of thing, but we're obviously working. It's a working recess. And we're going to begin uh, this, the, uh, the, the uh, luncheon with uh, Carolyn Chen, please. Carolyn. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are here for our quarterly luncheon. Our le the, the legislative packet that was posted has a summary from July, the monthly summary updates from July, August, and September. And Fariba just sent out the October update this morning, so you should have all received that. If not, just ping me and I can send that to you. And that's it. Uh, over to Fariba. Okay. Well, I, just, I will just go, good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Carolyn. We just start with Louisa. Louisa, do you want to go ahead and provide your briefing and answer questions? Sure, thank you. And it's good to see everyone. Good afternoon. Um, so um, I think the biggest update is that uh, uh, we are actually, my office is officially in the new building as of yesterday. So we, uh, our furniture and files moved. <laughs> Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, the space is beautiful, you know, inside. Um, I know some of you have been in it and uh, just the green wall in particular is, is breathtaking as you come into the lobby. Um, and one of the cool things too that I noticed yesterday is that uh, the Wheaton Arts Parade and Festival uh, folks who did this path of pyramids, they use it utilizing local artists to create these triangles kind of to reflect the uh, Wheaton Triangle. Um, really some incredible designs and art. And some of those are placed in the lobby. So it was nice to see them come from outside now that they've been outside for a couple or three weeks because they were temporary installations and now they're inside. Um, so we're there and as you might guess, just kind of dealing with all of the things that uh, that need to be dealt with when you move. The phones aren't working, the computers, you know, et cetera, but we're, we're working on all of that. Um, the garage also opened on Monday, so the garage is now open uh, for public use. Uh, that's really good news. And, um, and of course, the plaza is a bit behind in terms of a real official opening. Uh, one thing I will say, and um, you'll, you'll certainly be invited, uh, we're going to be doing not necessarily like a huge ribbon cutting, but we did want to mark the dedication of the plaza um, uh, for its name, Marion Fryer. It's on behalf and in honor and in recognition of Marion Fryer, who some of you knew as a um, really the mayor of Wheaton, a community activist and advocate and, and cheerleader for Wheaton. And the plaza is named after her. We've been working with her family um, to you know, come up with a very nice plaque with her bio and just to really honor her contributions to Wheaton. Um, because she cannot not be here to, to, to join us with that, at least uh, not physically. She's with us in spirit. Um, so we'll, we'll be doing a, 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 some sort of dedication or opening of the plaza, which will definitely let you all know about that. Um, you know, I think I'll just, if there are questions, the other, the other um, kind of thing that all of us, all of the regional area directors are, are of course supporting and working very closely with DHHS and many community partners uh, are the hubs, the consolidated service hubs. And in the mid county, we have three, I think there are a total of eight uh, throughout the county and three of them are in mid county serving mostly sort of that corridor between Wheaton, even some of Farce Glen, but Wheaton, uh, Glenmont and Aspen Hill and up to the outskirts of Olney. Um, and they are all at sort of different places in terms of their evolution the Hughes Memorial uh, Church Hub in just south of Wheaton being the first one online, um, but very looking forward to the Oak Chapel Hub coming online. I think it's October 22nd. I said uh, it's October 22nd, not the 13th, as I said in my report, uh, so that they can be alleviated some of the, uh, alleviate some of the numbers of people that they are, are trying to serve both with food distributions as well as food delivery um, services. So, um, yeah, I think I'll stop there to see if there's any other questions from the, my reports or anything that you, you know, uh, from what I've said. Okay. What I'm going to do is we'll go through, unless a council member has a direct question, I'm going to, we'll go through all of the reports and then we'll go to a five minute rule so that we can, we can get some questions if there, if anybody has any, uh, and we'll go back to Carolyn. She's calling on people, but I did want to say, Louisa, I was at the, uh, the uh, artwork for the, the Wheaton Triangle, and they really are fun. I mean, you know, you have to, we walked around and, and enjoyed it. So uh, it's very nice. 
Uh, Carolyn, wherever you move to, I, everybody jumps around. Mm -hmm. There you are. Okay. Yeah, Fariba's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Kathy, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, do you want to go next? Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well and your families are too. Um, I just uh, want to point out a couple of things from a report. Um, the Middlebrook Road diet, you may have gotten some comments or will get some. Uh, people are noticing new markings on the roadway and are wondering what the heck they, they mean. Um, this is a part of uh, the pedestrian safety plan for the area, uh, basically phase one, because we don't have the funds, of course, to implement the entire plan right now. Uh, but people are noticing the bike, uh, the green markings and, and the bike lanes. And uh, there's some confusion, but we're getting it straightened out. Uh, so just wanted to alert you to that. Also, um, we're continuing to work with the businesses and the community um, uh, post-COVID. We're thinking post-COVID, right? Um, but the community overall is faring pretty well. We're continuing to work with businesses, getting them information and materials that will help them like the mask up deca uh, decals and, and other materials. Um, uh, some of you know that the Up County is a big sports community. Uh, we have a lot of youth sports leagues and uh, they we're working hard to keep them informed of various guidelines as they're updated. Um, residents are uh, anxious to open more venues, more activities, but I, I think even more are expressing their appreciation to the county's measured approach uh, with COVID in our response. Um, so I wanted you to know that's what we're hearing more of, the thank yous. Um, the Up County Consolidated Hub is still operating out of Black Rock Center for the Arts, and we've reached now um, the point of serving a thousand families per week. Um, that's all over the up county and we're inching into other areas, but uh, trying to pass along um, some of those other communities to other groups that are closer to them. Um, everything's going well, a lot, of, a lot more interest and, and a lot more volunteers are coming forward to help with that as well. Um, and I don't know if, um, I guess one of my colleagues will probably mention too, we're working with the Arts and Humanities Council on promoting the vote. Um, a selected group of artists uh, are providing some works and we'll help them uh, find locations in our regions to post those so that people can see them. They're very colorful and uh, very interesting pieces. So look for those, please. Um, and with that, I'll stop unless someone has a specific question. Thank you, Fariba, oh. please. Roberto, you want to go next? Well, hi, folks, and, and thanks for having us uh, do these uh, quarterly pieces. Very, very helpful. Um, I want to start with, with a, a fascinating uh, good news. Our Silver Spring Citizens Advisory Board just uh, selected their um, executive committee. And I, I was checking with uh, Debbie Spielberg and others. I think this is uh, the first time that that advisory board has had an all female executive committee. The, the, the chair, vice chair, parliamentarian and secretary um, and it's also um, uh, additionally diverse by um, one of the members being a representative from the Ethiopian community, another being representative from the LGBT community, and two members uh, of those, the four executive committee are folks with um, um, Latino heritage as well. So it's it's uh, we're really proud of this. We had our first uh, um, uh, board meeting last night. And and it's 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 something that, that we're particularly proud of in in the rare good news uh, factor of of of, of um, uh, category. Um, I want to 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 also say something. Uh, uh, Kathy Matthews mentioned this about uh, getting. Uh, I think with us being much more online and active on social media, etc. Um, we we are getting a lot of of thank you notes, if you will. And I really appreciate that. I think there's. Um, uh, a lot of folks in the community that are appreciative of, of how we're handling um, a, a lot of the reopening. Uh, <clears throat> um, 
And speaking of the reopening, we're, we, we're, um, our eateries in downtown Silver Spring and the way that restaurants throughout the Silver Spring region have taken to the outside um, uh, seems to be generally working. We've been good in adhering to, uh, to, to compliance in, in folks that, 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 that are not necessarily complying, but these are being very, very well received out there. Um, the eateries walking around late into the evening now till midnight where some restaurants have gotten the, the privilege to serve um, alcohol till midnight uh, uh, seems to be working. Um, in that whole area of winterizing our community where, where we um, also, some of us are working in some pieces of countywide effort. In my case, is the retail and restaurant. And so we're, we're dealing with the whole issue of winterizing. How do you do tents safely, heaters safely? And generally, how do you get folks to live outdoor more in collaboration with the parks department, getting, getting some of the parks uh, dedicated for, for picnicking and, and uh, working with a DOT to do this shared streets which has been have been an amazing success throughout the community. Folks uh, really seem to be welcoming these. Um, the hubs have been mentioned. We were proud to say the uh, the the uh, Clifton Park Baptist Church there on on Piney Branch. It's one of the hubs that's most centrally located to to apartment complexes that we can actually uh, they're experiment they may be experimenting with delivering food via bicycles and, and so it's really exciting good energy particularly with that hub regarding the amount and number of other nonprofits that are collaborating uh, the Long Branch partners and others are, are really right there with Clifton Park um, uh, doing the best they can and and um, lastly working with the parks uh, with the planning folks. On, on not only the countywide Thrive effort, but also the Silver Spring uh, Master Plan, downtown Silver Spring Master Plan, which has a series of of of, of issues that that will likely bubble up to to to, to a lot of discussion, including the boundary, including uh, other aspects of of that plan. Um, and, and lastly, I said that before, but lastly, our civic building is, of course, again, uh, wearing its middle name proudly, civic, as uh, an early uh, voting site before then it returns back to being a testing site. Lots going on. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. How about Ken Hartman? Thank you, Fariba. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, a few highlights from from my part of the county. Uh, we've been working really hard to boost businesses in Bethesda and in the Pike District. Um, in Bethesda, we just finished up Savor Bethesda because we couldn't have Taste of Bethesda this year. So we did a restaurant week uh, that ran until the 11th. Um, initial feedback is positive from the restaurants, um, uh, from the, the, the folks we were able to, to, to come out and, and dine. Each restaurant prepared certain meals at certain price points and that was the selling point um, to, to kind of boost their their um, their sales. Uh, we are acquiring about 20 heaters to continue the streetery into the winter as long as people um, can can uh, can do it. Um, we're not pursuing tents. Uh, it's just too much of a the, the streeteries are, are too large an area and the cost is just prohibitive. Um, in the Pike District, uh, we we just finished a very successful weekend of, of uh, drive-in movies. We partnered with uh, Combined Properties, where the Shoppers Food Warehouse was on Nicholson. Uh, we used that parking lot for um, three nights. Sunday got uh, postponed. Uh, drive-in movies, we charged $25 a, a car. A bit of that went to the Bethesda um, uh, uh, food program that's, that's ongoing that I'll talk about in a minute. But that was very, very successful. Part of the ticket also went to a voucher that people could use to, um, to, to buy dinner at one of the local restaurants. Um, on to, to that, been very happy to assist with the team at HHS, uh, getting the Twinbrook Hub up and running, connecting our folks with Rockville, with, with um, Interfaith, uh, working out the space needs uh, with the Board of Appeals, which is in there, um, and I and uh, very pleased it's 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 um, it'll become our eighth hub. And uh, finally, uh, I mentioned the Bethesda food drive. Um, 
we usually have a dinner uh, in December for needy families in the Bethesda area. Can't do that this year, so we decided to a coalition of the business community, uh, local churches, my office, the Urban Partnership, uh, decided to launch a, a, a food drive in partnership with the Rescue Squad. We serve about 230 families a week come down to downtown Bethesda to pick up food. Councilmember Friedson has been there personally handing out food. Extremely, no one expected it to be this successful. So I've worked to, to help integrate what was a community, a short-term community effort with the county's ongoing efforts so that people who come are aware of the entire universe of, of, of food uh, where it's available. Um, and of that 230 families, about a third come from Bethesda zip codes, 20817, 2814, 2815. Um, I'll stop there and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ken. And finally, Jewel Bande. Jewel, you need to unmute, please. Thank you, Fariba. Good afternoon. Uh, Following my colleagues, we in East County are also working very, very closely with the businesses uh, in the five retail centers uh, uh, within the region. I will start with uh, some good news in light of uh, the challenges uh, uh, we all face uh, created by the pandemics. We'll start with the first big one. Tomorrow, I'm definitely sure you all are aware of the launch of the flash uh, uh, transit system along US 29, uh, which uh, is going to be held in Briggs Cheney uh, tomorrow starting at uh, uh, 1030. That's good news and I do believe they will begin to change the face of uh, uh, many things to come in East County. Uh, following that, the uh, on the 14th, I'm sorry, uh, next week on the 23rd, we will do a ribbon cutting for the Wheeler Manor Fairland, which is an uh, 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 affordable housing uh, project with 122 units uh, right on the parking lot of the East County Regional Services Center. On the 15th, actually at 8 a.m., Aldi's grocery store will be uh, open uh, at the Orchard Shopping Center on Cherry Hill. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning all of some of this is uh, as we have struggled through the pandemics, uh, this, we are opening businesses in East County, creating job opportunities, uh, which I do think is pretty good for the community. Uh, last week, we opened the Tropical Cuisine at the Briggs Cheney Shopping Center, which is uh, uh, it's a very sophisticated Jamaican restaurant. And so we'll you know, invite all of you all really to patronize this new business uh, there, uh, I'm sure Donovan, the manager, would really appreciate that. In August and September, uh, the Halal uh, uh, store, I'm sorry, uh, restaurant and the Taco Bell were also open at the Bricks Cheney, uh, I'm sorry, the Bordensville Shopping Center. So uh, with the Willow Manor, the launch of the Flash, the, all these tropical cuisine, Halal, Taco Bell, and uh, we are very, very excited that uh, this uh, creates opportunities for jobs for East County residents, while we continue to work with the other businesses, getting them ready for the winter. The survival is the key word here for our businesses that employs a lot of our folks uh, in East County. Like my colleagues, we are working very closely with the Kingdom Fellowship AME, the lead for our East County uh, consolidated food services uh, uh, distribution hub. Uh, unlike uh, other regions, uh, we have probably our good share of very large food providers, MANA, uh, City of Light, uh, Kingdom Fellowship, the Rainbow, uh, American Diversity, as well as uh, the uh, Community People's Baptist Church. Uh, we provide food events six days a week, and not only in large parking lots, but we are actually going to communities uh, with high density apartment uh, buildings uh, in White Oak and Briggs Cheney, where we're actually taking those services. Uh, now we've expanded the food distribution at those sites to include uh, walk-up or drive-by COVID testing, uh, which I think is becoming 
uh, very uh, beneficial in terms of attracting uh, uh, residents uh, of color uh, in those locations. We are also using that opportunities to promote uh, a number of other programs, including the grants programs for the rental assistance, the business assistance, as well as outreach for our minority health programs, including the African American health programs. We are, you know, taking uh, information about the elections, COVID-19 awareness, and uh, uh, census uh, awareness as well. We are also very busy in, you know, a couple of the neighborhood action teams. And I know Council Member Tom Hawker's staff uh, and uh, the rest of the four or five county departments involved with uh, in two neighborhood action teams, uh, particularly in Hillandel, which has been a pretty troublesome uh, area. Uh, we are beginning to see uh, some great success, particularly in code enforcement, uh, as well as uh, parking, uh, noise abatement, and a number of uh, other uh, uh, issues that uh, we continue to be faced with in those communities. I'll stop here and uh, uh, answer any questions uh, you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the first council member that would like to speak is uh, council member Albernaz. Um, thank you, Sydney. Well, first, thank all of you. I know you guys are working seven days a week. We all see your social media accounts and we see how you are everywhere and the coalition building and partnership development that you've been working on your entire careers uh, is really taking fruit. And we see evidence of that everywhere. So I just want to start from that space of thanking all of you um, for your dedication and everything you guys are doing. And I know everybody feels the same way. Um, I, I, I had the opportunity to go to the, the Westfield um, free COVID location this past Saturday. I'm sure there are probably other corporate partners that have stepped forward to help out directly through the pandemic and in recovery. If there are other organizations that are out there that you guys think may appreciate a thank you note from my colleagues and I, um, let us know. Um, I, I was going to send something. I was going to talk to Nancy about sending something to Westfield um, because it was really impressive. And I heard on site that they were really stepping up um, and being a true partner uh, in, in getting that off the ground. And I know the Soccerplex, I think Craig was just at the Soccerplex, um, is also hosting a site um, today. So um, if there are other partners that are out there or just people that have stepped up in different ways, um, it, it'd be nice to, to get that list um, to, to send notes to people. Um, and then the other thing I've observed, and this is a really good thing, is that a lot of new organizations and people seem to be stepping forward. Um, I met with St. John's Church in Bethesda. Ken, I think, referred to them in his update. Um, I was really impressed uh, with their level of organization and their authentic and true commitment to stepping forward. Are we keeping track somewhere, or is it probably, I assume it's probably more organic, um, but are we keeping track within each of your respective regional service areas of new and emerging organizations or leaders that have, you know, stepped up so that we can leverage those relationships and then maybe expand mm -hmm. upon them moving forward? Um, I'll answer for Up County. Uh, I have not formally, but I think I will after this conversation. Um, but we are, you're right, we're starting to see more and more informal groups um, coming together to, to serve the community um, and other folks that we may not have heard of before. Um, there's um, an organization, a non small nonprofit, who has stepped up to provide uh, uh, and distribute uh, masks, for instance to veterans who may not be active with a local uh, American Legion or another organization. So yes, um, I think my colleagues and I can probably say that we are finding new people. Yeah. For me, for East County, we started really forming alliance with some of the subcontractors under the African American Health Initiative, uh, one that uh, was contracted to distribute uh, PPEs. Uh, we brought them into the fold and we continue to form relationships and partnerships with organizations like that. I, I would add too for, I'm glad you brought up Westfield Gabe because um, council member Albert knows because he, they've really done an amazing job at stepping up. So yes, last weekend was the COVID walk up testing, but they've also 
hosted food distributions on their site. Um, they were generous to let us on literally for about five, six, maybe seven week, weekends straight to do census outreach uh, in front of Costco and within the mall. So, and they even had uh, a couple of weekends ago, a, uh, a pet food distribution. So people could come and pick up pet food for their pets. So they've been very active in the community. And I also agree, it's in, a lot of the partners and the leads in these hubs are actually in a sense, brand new to us, not brand new in the sense that they've been, you know, community members and and church leaders, but in this space of providing uh, safety net resources and assistance to our residents, um, a lot of the partners in our hubs are kind of, new, you know, new to us in that sense. So I think a uh, good idea to, to keep track of that and how can we support those going forward, even post COVID. And, and in Silver Spring, amazing what the, um... Uh, Salvadorian consulate uh, is doing. They they went dormant there for a while. Um, now they're open again, only on um, uh, by by appointment. But in the um, uh, they did a distribution, a food distribution that was overly successful. About five, they expected two hundred people, got a thousand, and now they're scheduled in collaboration with the uh, Latino Health Initiative and the Mary Center uh, three. Uh, as Saturday, starting this Saturday, uh, three Saturdays to do COVID testing. So this whole notion of, of new folks uh, really connecting is, is something that, that yes, we, uh, we, we want to put a, got to get a handle on that. It's great. Great. Uh, thank you. I'll defer back to you. Thank you. Thank you. You were right at five minutes. You, you, you must have a timer, Gabe. Um, Councilmember Rice, please. Well, thank you very much. And thank you, Councilmember Albernos. Yeah, I actually went up to Germantown on the break. And so this is just a, a moment to just uh, compliment uh, how effective our program is working. I literally, when we ended, drove up to Germantown to the Regal, uh, to the Regal Cinemas uh, parking lot, uh, got my COVID test, uh, still picked up lunch and was able to be back here in time for this meeting. Uh, that doesn't say about the efficacy of the programs that are happening and what we're doing. And it was packed. There were a lot of people there, uh, but they were very efficient. Uh, and so you guys inspired me with that conversation. I had had a COVID test back in uh, late July, but hadn't one, had one recently. And I said, you know what, let's just go and see what it's like. And uh, so, Kathy, it's going great. Um, I also did, did, did want to touch on something. And so my question is about um, when it comes to the winterization. And I heard you, Roberto. Uh, talk about that. I'm curious about wh what we're doing in terms of outreach uh, with our restaurants and letting them know about the availability of the funds uh, that are there to help them with the renderization. How are we communicating that to them? Uh, how, what have we seen in terms of people actually taking and availing themselves of that credit to be able to help them to do that? Um, so I'm curious about what some of the successes are. And I guess I'll start with my home district. So I'll start with Kathy. Um, Councilmember Rice, we, we are reaching out to the businesses, uh, especially the restaurants in particular. Um, as you know, in Germantown and Damascus, Clarksburg, and other areas, Poolsville, the other areas, we don't have a lot of uh, retail that you would find in other parts of the county. But in terms of the restaurants, um, certain ones that were some of the first to come out with outdoor dining have uh, are getting ready to winterize with, with heaters, et cetera. We still have a number of restaurants, however, especially in Germantown, <clears throat> in the middle of town, in Germantown, um, that are not doing um, anything at this point. They, they are um, reluctant to do outdoor dining. And in terms of going a step further, uh, there are a couple that really have been slow in opening indoors even. Um, they, they cite the reasons as being um, not sure how long this is going to go and they're just, they just want to be very, very cautious. Others are um, not wanting to have to um, interact with potential customers who won't abide by the safety guidelines. Um, so we're finding uh, different stories all over the up county area, um, which is a little unlike Bethesda and Silver Spring. 
if I may follow up on that, um, in, in the, the the winter icing, particularly for retail and restaurants, and more so even for restaurants, uh, a lot of it is uh, in, in in the realm of tents and heaters, and the simple message that uh, tent yes may work, but can make the point that with tent you can't have um, a, a gas heaters. So so that presents a challenge. So folks are seeing that sometimes maybe it's better not to have a tent. And how we're getting the word out uh, through the retail and restaurant uh, work group of of the reopening effort, uh, we're, we're really trying to expand the network of small and large restaurants and also bring in, frankly, there are many restaurants that are in part of uh, some of the major shopping centers. So we're working with shopping centers throughout the county to help get that word out because it's not just about heaters and tents. It's also, of course, uh, about uh, facilitating better the whole pickup uh, sequence of ordering um, and and uh, and and the, the the presence online presence of of these restaurants. So so we're 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 trying to 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 of course use the traditional methods of news releases etc. But and as critical to use these influencers. I mean they, there's some families and uh, uh, that have. 10, as many as 10 restaurants, and we're trying to work it that way, along with the smaller chambers and the larger chambers, of course, uh, but the, the ethnic chambers, the Ethiopian Chamber of Commerce, the Latino cha Chamber of Commerce. So, so that's how we're trying to get it there. You know, so let me just I jump just... in. Oh, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Gonna... I'm sorry. I just wanted to jump on what uh, Rianberto was saying. I have to send a big shout out and thank you to the chambers of commerce that serve the up county. Uh, all of them have been great and very active in Rimberto's work group. Um, but the Gaithersburg Germantown Chamber, the Clarksburg Chamber, and the Poolsville area chambers have been, a, have been doing a marvelous job in assisting uh, their members and also those uh, businesses who are not members of their organizations. Um, so they're doing a fabulous job answering questions, helping find um, ways to winterize if there is a, you know, those restaurants that do want to do that, the ones in the Rio and in Crown. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure we give them uh, a big thank you. So my time is up. I just want to encourage us with the, um, with the pandemic increasing. Um, it's going to really put a burden on our restaurants. Uh, and so really going to need prepare, to be prepared for that, especially when it comes to indoor dining and its impact on indoor dining. So just, just food for thought. Thank you, uh, Council, Member, Council Member Navarro. Thank you very much. This has been a great update. Uh, Council Member Rice um, touched upon my question. Uh, so I guess I'll ask... Um, Ms. Montero Diaz, with regards to the winterization for restaurants and the street eateries, et cetera. So we'd love to know uh, how that's going in Wheaton. Um, and also just a much more of an overarching question, because I think during this pandemic, things have just been, you know, happening so fast that I, I kind of want to understand what is the communication um, system between what's happening on the ground and then, you know, regional services directors, and then uh, is it to Fariba, for example, to troubleshoot issues? And I ask this because I've had a couple of um, issues that have arised, for example, in Wheaton, where like a member of WUDAC would contact me about an issue, which, which is great, but I don't see why. Um, it's almost like we're doing double duty or making making the process even more complicated because you know presumably WUDAC would then can contact Luisa directly Luisa can contact Fariba you can troubleshoot the issue versus it having to come to me so that I have to contact perhaps Fariba or somebody else to get it done so in terms of how we're streamlining um, you know issues are coming up that are related to COVID-19 I just want to make sure that we have, I mean, obviously I would love, I want to be involved and I want to be contacted, et cetera. But the, but the point of having our regional services centers there is basically to have that very quick streamlined way of addressing things. So that's, that's just one thing. Cause I know with the pandemic, it has just become a lot more difficult. Um, and then um, I guess connected to that is the notion that I know early on in the pandemic, we had forwarded to Dr. Gales and started a whole list 
of places in our districts where there could be testing and things of that nature. Um, and I'm not sure if that was shared because the Westfield Wheaton event actually was coordinated by uh, Delegate uh, Jared Salomon, which is awesome. But I was a little bit surprised because I just thought this was part of, for you know, for Nuestra Salud y Bienestar, given that we have forwarded all those lists. And, and, and I just thought that had happened. And, and I missed the, the event because I had a death in the family, so I couldn't attend. But I'm glad that it happened. I just, wa just want to make sure that as we're tackling all of these issues, that the, we have a streamlined way to coordinate all of these issues. So, so you know, if, maybe Fariba, you can answer that, you know, separately. It doesn't have to be right now because we have a five minute rule, but I'll, I'm just curious about the, the way that we're doing communication. Um, but perhaps um, Luisa, in terms of providing that same uh, opportunity for the uh, restaurants in Wheaton or these businesses, are they aware? Are they like going to be accessing this money? How, what's the status of that? Yeah. Um, so in in um, in our urban districts where we have uh, you know staff that are dedicated the 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 Wheaton Urban District team that's dedicated it's actually um, a lot easier to get information out. So I mean in the case of the the information um, again how do you get a permit for the heater what, what do you need to know about the tent. I mean, we've done a variety of things. We've done, we've, our, 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 our team, our, our clean and safe team have actually gone around to each and every business with the material in writing. And we, we put that out there. We provided information, kind of educated them on it. So that's literally going door to door. I mean, in addition to that, we use, you know, social media. We put it out through, uh, through the WheatonMD.org um, website and social media. I mean, all the other mechanisms that are that we always use to get information out. Um, I will also say that our our business partners, like LEDC, uh, particularly in Wheaton, have been critical to this because they have folks on the ground in conversation and in discussion with businesses and can provide can can help uh, you know disseminate this kind of information. Not only disseminate it, but then help people, you know, apply for it, make sure they've got all their ducks in line. Um, where so do you I, know what's the status in terms of how many restaurants have decided to access it? So when I heard Ken say, we're not going to do heaters, you know, we're not going to do tents, we're going to do heaters, you know, I have a, I get a sense that Ken sort of knows what's the status of, you know, who within their area is going to be utilizing this. So I'm just wondering if you know what is the status of how many restaurants, et cetera, and what are they going to be using? Yeah, yeah, I don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head. Now I can get that. In Bethesda, it's a bit different because there the Bethesda Urban Partnerships is, 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 is controlling it. In Wheaton, and I think in Silver Spring as well, it's been individual restaurants. And so we, we do have the streetery of about seven restaurants over at Price and Fern. They are yeah. more or less working together so that they, you know, they are there. That's in the works. The other restaurants are you know, individually doing it. So I'll have to see like who's actually applied. Some have applied and and frankly, because they've had some COVID violations, they're not able to get the permit right away. So we're working with them to see what is it that they need to do to, to come online so that they can get the heat and the tent permits. But every, in Wheaton, it's, it's every, you're working with each individual restaurant. We don't have that sort of infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that, and and I hope that we can figure out ways to troubleshoot it so that folks can can succeed, especially during this time, though, where things are getting a little tougher. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. I just just to add, you know, just um, it's curious, right? This is just around the triangle. You know, the businesses that we've really been working closely with because of the construction, but since COVID, three businesses have closed two of them moved. So they moved to other parts of the county. One did close. Mm -hmm. um, and But yeah, we've had two new businesses open up sort of in that vicinity. So mm -hmm. it's it's been interesting because I would have expected a higher level of closure in that area. But so far, we're actually just, you know, maintaining as best Maybe the Small about. Business Impact Program worked. There you go. In, in, it in has way, in, in, hold it. Thank you. Council Member Friedson. Thank you, Council President. I really appreciate it. Just wanted to build off of uh, the comments from Councilmember Navarro about the tents and the streeteries. You know, I think it's one of the best things that we've done uh, during the pandemic. We heard earlier in our public health update of how dangerous we know uh, indoor activities can be if not managed 
uh, properly in particular. And so the fact that the county was able to step up with the Bethesda Streetery and the Wheaton Streetery and the Street Dine in Silver Spring and uh, some of the, uh, the smaller uh, activities that have been done through the uh, different RSC uh, directors and shopping centers throughout the county and uh, at, uh, at Black Rock and the parking lot, the efforts uh, that are happening there. I mean, these have been great ways, I believe, to show how government can get to yes instead of figuring out uh, how we get to no. And, and I think it's been, you know, one of the real shining examples of how we've all worked together to figure out uh, how we can rethink the way we do things to adjust to this new normal, allow residents to stay safe and allow restaurants and retailers to stay in business. And uh, I am uh, really disappointed uh, that uh, we're not looking at uh, in Bethesda and elsewhere of really figuring out how we can keep these open uh, in the winter. I think that it's dangerous to not have safe outlets that the county is providing uh, for residents. I think it is uh, very potentially damaging for the businesses who have relied on this as a lifeline to uh, keep their lights on. And I, I just wanna say, I mean, we have really stepped up in so many ways to focus specifically on how we can help these businesses, not just with these regulatory uh, efforts, with all the efforts that your regional service center teams are doing and uh, county government is doing. I know all of our council office teams, the executive branch, everybody is in on this. We've appropriated tens of millions of dollars uh, in order to uh, work on these efforts. And uh, the fact that uh, we would shy away from it because we think that uh, the cost may be too great. I think the cost of not doing it uh, may be far greater in terms of the businesses that we would lose. And I will say I've raised this uh, concern and question about getting ahead of it as early as July uh, with uh, some of the uh, economic recovery work groups, the uh, restaurant and retail group, and, and Roberto can uh, speak to that who leads uh, that effort. Uh, internally and externally. And uh, I think we're getting dangerously close at this point, uh, but I hope that we can rethink that uh, decision in Bethesda and elsewhere, because I really do believe this is an important way to keep residents safe and to keep our local businesses afloat at a time that it's going to be increasingly difficult to do both as we keep hearing repeatedly uh, from uh, our community, from our public health experts uh, and from our uh, residents and businesses. Uh, so I'm happy to hear a question on that. And I did want to ask a second question of, of everybody. Uh, certainly Ken Hartman is uh, an example of this. You're always utility players as our RSC directors doing a, a load of uh, other duties as assigned uh, and, and a very broad portfolio. And during COVID, I know uh, many of you have taken on not just different roles as an RSC director, but have been brought into much different roles than you've ever been asked uh, to do. And I just wanted to get a sense of, do you think your RSC duties are still sufficiently staffed and do you feel like you're able to, uh, to do your job the way that you need to do it, both to deal with the public health emergency, uh, all the business issues that you're uh, dealing with and resident uh, issues that you're dealing with uh, and the additional uh, leadership roles that you're having to take on as part of the executive branch? Ken? Uh, I'll take the last question first, which is uh, no, uh, we, we've never been adequately staffed, but we all, the five of us see, we, we behave like startup nonprofits. We throw ourselves into it. We get involved with as much as we can, but there's a limit. And I'm sure your offices have seen when you get calls or when you hear from a community. Um, and sometimes that happens because we're not um, available or, uh, or equipped to deal with, uh, uh, with the range of community issues. I mean, my area has a population of 270,000 people. There's, there's no way for me to be everywhere. So um, moving on from there, um, the Bethesda Streetery. Uh, so our, our decision was based on the, the size of the tents that we'd have to bring in. And this is a, a decision the Urban Partnership um, uh, has, has made uh, and then they the issues of heating these very, very large tents um, uh, with uh, with propane or electric, um, there, there was no physical way to manage both a tent and the heaters. So the decision was, let's get the heaters. Uh, we've, we've actually 
gotten grants to pay for a substantial part of, uh, of that. Um, um, but that, that, that was just, I mean, where nothing though prevents a restaurant from them pursuing a, a tent. This is just our streetery, which is in the middle of the public streets, uh, over very, very large areas. Um, that was just, um, um, what, what we talked about. And we're happy to, 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 to chat offline with, 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 with you to see if there's something we missed and uh, should revisit. Yeah, I think I'm on my point and I hope that we can. And I, you know, if it's cost prohibitive for the county that has allocated tens of millions of dollars uh, to these efforts, it's mostly cost prohibitive to many of the businesses. I think that's the whole reason why the county should be doing it. And I hope to talk offline and I know other council members have are nodding and, and feel similarly. Thank you. We'll Thank you. Council member Glass. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I appreciate my colleagues questions about all the incredible work that you're doing uh, and have done and are planning to do uh, in, in our business in our business districts uh, to make sure that businesses are able to uh, continue feeding us and providing other amenities. But I want to switch gears a little bit uh, because uh, each of your offices and home bases are going to be integral to the uh, election effort that's taking place. And I'm, I'm curious to know where you all are with regards to uh, an overflowing crowd. You know, we, despite having more than 320,000 Montgomery County residents request mail-in ballots, an overwhelming majority of our registered voters here, we still do expect people to, to turn out and vote um, in mostly all of your facilities. And so I'm just curious uh, w from your perspectives, what the, the planning for that is and how we might be making uh, making it easier and keeping people safe uh, on on our property if 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 i could speak to that uh, for for the silver spring civic building it's actually rather easy in that we've have some ex quite a bit of experience with overflow crowd for uh for, for voting and we fully expect that to be the case for early voting particularly the first day right and so the the route of the snake has already been 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 charted. So so I think it, it will not be an issue. Uh, we've seen in other places where folks have been bringing uh, free pizza and donuts to folks standing in line. And so we, exp we fully expect some of that goodwill uh, in the citizenry. Um, so I I, I th and uh, barring bad weather. So, so I think we have that under control for particularly the civic building, which we fully expect to be overflow. Uh, I presume, uh, yeah, Juru. A couple of East County locations. We've had the experience uh, in the past uh, election cycles. And uh, as Roberto says, said, we just hope we don't have inclement bad weather. That's the only concern that I have and particularly uh, the prisoner uh, location is outside, uh, it's very wide open. So that would be something that I do know uh, would apply to all the other locations throughout the county. And what do we do if the county is really under bad weather? Good, well, uh, I, I, I presume the same safety measures are uh, and thoughtfulness are being taken at, at the other jurisdictions as yeah. well. Uh, and so it's good to know that the, the snaking the lines of have uh, been devised uh, for what we expect to be an overflow crowd as well. Uh, and um, that's that's really all I, I wanted to know because I uh, I appreciate the, the questions that my colleagues have asked previously. So keep up the good work uh, and good luck in the next two to three weeks as as all of your centers be, 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 uh, become or even uh, become hubs for democracy even more than they already are, civic advocacy. So thank you. Also remember, I just wanted to thank you and your colleagues for actually going out there and trying to explain the, the, the four uh, ballot questions. Uh, for even the well-educated individual having to figure out which is which is one thing, but with uh, a community that's so diverse where we do have language barriers, uh, that I do see continues to be a challenge to get communities to understand exactly what each of those ballots means and the impact it has for us, not just today, but for, for the future. 
That, thank you for that. I, I believe all of us uh, on the council have been participating in Zooms talking about it. Uh, and yes, they're not easy uh, for those who, who, who follow us on Zoom, who might be tuning in right now, might have difficulty explaining some of the ballot measures. But uh, I appreciate that and, and know all of my colleagues have been contributing to that effort. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member, Council Vice President Hucker. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> three quick points. Um, a lot's been said, but Rianberto, thank you so much for your hard work on Newell Street and Acorn Park uh, last week. It's wildly popular. We see tweets about it every day, multiple times a day, um, and we really hope that this will turn into something we can build on um, since, obviously, it's under consideration by the planning board for, for a, little, uh, a little while now um, and part of the Silver Spring uh, sector plan. But your work is really uh, important, especially at this time, uh, as we have uh, um, the days are drawing shorter and it's really popular in that community. Um, so thanks for your partnership on that. Um, and Jeru, thanks for all your hard work as usual on those prob problem properties you mentioned in East County um, and all the economic development and job creation work in East County as well, and the food distribution. It's been fantastic as usual. And I know you're working very hard and I'm really grateful um, for all, all your partnership on that. Um, I want to echo the comments uh, several Councilmember Friedson and Navarro and others have made about winterizing. I really hope that we can spend more time and probably investment in this in the future. Um, there was a, I, I absolutely agree, we've, we've spent a lot of investment already and to just let all that sort of slow now and dry up when it's been so popular and effective would be, um, would be, would be counterproductive. And um, there was a great article in National Geographic I could send around if you're interested about how the Norwegians look at outdoor living, um, how they both uh, address their mental health uh, in uh, long winter nights. They have two of the top 10 uh, happiest cities in the world, um, despite their long winter nights, because they're so focused on outdoor living. Plenty of people spend 200 nights a, a year outdoors, um, and they claim there's no bad weather, there's just bad clothing. And they've really done an awful lot of systems work to allow people to spend time outdoors, during the winter to help with their mental health and um, and their activity level and, and their uh, their physical health as well. So um, there's a lot there I think that we could do that we haven't had to do in the past, but this is the year to do it. And I look forward to working with everybody on that. Thanks. Thank you. Well, that wraps up everyone's uh, thought, uh, questions. I mean, there again, we thank each and every one of you for everything that you do, not just during this time, but all the time. You're truly our partners and we, and we uh, thank you for, for being our partner uh, all through the year. Um, we're going to go on recess a second time today, but we're going to come back at 1.30, 1.30 for public hearings and some other discussions beyond that. So uh, see everyone at 1.30. Thank you.